moment. All right, beautiful. Thank you for joining me for a 60 minute restorative yoga class. Uh, restorative yoga is a very gentle floor based style of yoga that uses props to help us relax. Uh, some styles of yoga, the goal is to get stronger or more flexible or learn how to balance on one arm. But in this style of yoga, um, the goal is just to relax and we're going to use yoga asanas, postures and our breath um, to relax a little bit deeper. You don't need any fancy yoga props, but you'll want a carpeted area or a yoga mat if you have one. And then um, some pillows from around your house of different sizes and maybe a blanket as well. So again, you don't need fancy yoga props, but just some pillows and blankets so you can get extra cozy. Okay, so we're gonna start in a comfortable seated position, whatever that is for you. You can sit crisscross applesauce. You can sit in Sukhasana easy pose with one foot in front of the other. Maybe take a moment and just rock back and forth side to side Then sit up nice and tall. You can roll your shoulders forward a few times, backward a few times. And just let your shoulders fall as you start to enter into your yoga space. Good for you for practicing yoga today. We're gonna start with a breathing exercise that you may have tried before. It's called square breathing. The idea is we'll inhale through our nose for a count of four, hold the inhale for four, exhale for four, hold the exhale for four. So you inhale, pause, exhale, pause for equal amounts of time. Um, if you'd like, you can count with me to four in your mind to help center your mind. And you can also imagine that you're tracing the four sides of a square with your breath. So the inhale is one side of the square. Pause, exhale, pause. You're welcome to close your eyes for uh, square breathing. Closing your eyes is distracting or doesn't feel safe. You can keep your eyes open, but do a soft fuzzy gaze just beyond the tip of your nose. Sit up tall, relax your shoulders, relax your jaw, seal your lips, then begin. Inhale through your nose for one, two, three, four. Hold the inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale through your nose, one, two, three, four. Hold the exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale through your nose, four, three, two, one, pause, four, three, two, one. Exhale through your nose, four, three, two, one, pause, four, three, two, one. Breathe in, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, breathe out, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, inhale for four, pause for four, exhale for four, hold for four, Let's do two more minutes of square breathing, inhaling, holding, exhaling, and holding for four. If your mind is wandering, just return to the square breathing. You can use the count of four to help center your thoughts.
Let's do one more full round of square breathing. Whenever you're ready, just return your breath to normal in and out through your nose. Some people really love square breathing and um, some people swear by it. If you kind of wake up in the middle of the night and can't fall back asleep, you just do square breathing for a while. Um, I know other people who don't love square breathing. I um, have a student who feels really anxious when they hold the exhale breath and that is um, not uncommon. And I'm sharing this with you to say that we're all gonna have different experiences um, with breathing exercises, with embodied movement, with yoga postures. Um, not just by, you know, who we are as a person, but by day to day, right? Maybe one day a posture really speaks to you and the next day, not so much. And in this class, you are truly your greatest teacher. Um, and you, I want you to be listening to your body. So I'm going to give lots of options in all of the postures. You can take them or, you know, if something really is not speaking to you or you have another, you know, modification or trip that you want to do, you're welcome to do that, right? So really just um, listening to your body in this time. If your eyes are closed, you can slowly open your eyes. Again, maybe make some circles with your shoulders forward and backward. And then drop your shoulders down. Good. We're going to do a little bit of um, some warm-up postures before we hop into our longer held stuff. So take your right hand outside of your right hip. Keep in mind that I'm not mirroring you. Keep your right hand outside of your right hip and reach your left arm long overhead, stretching the left side body. Good. Try to keep your left hip and left knee down. So notice if you're tilting way to the right, right? Press the left hip down, lengthen through the left arm, drop the left shoulder, breathe. Good. You're going to take your left hand down to the floor, sweep it forward, just getting some motion in your spine. Take your left hand outside of left hip and reach your right arm long overhead, stretching the right side body. Drop the shoulder, look forward. You might notice that the side feels different from the other side or looks different, right? And that's really normal. Uh, we're not symmetrical. We are not butterflies. We are perfectly imperfect, and that is welcome in a yoga practice. Good, take your right hand down to the floor, sweep your right arm forward, left hand forward, and just drop your head around your spine. Take a moment here, holding forward. Good, walk your hands in towards you, circle your hands back behind you, and now arch your spine, look up and back. Breathe. Good. Slowly bring your spine back to a neutral position. Keep your right hand close behind you. Take left hand to right knee. We're going to twist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, pull abdomen in. Look over right shoulder. Good. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look back, twist. Good. Slowly, carefully unwind. We'll do the other side. Take your left hand close behind you. Place right hand on left knee. On the breath in, stretch up. On the breath out, look back, twist. And use your breath to get deeper in postures. Inhale, stretch, lift. Exhale, twist. Good, slowly unwind, come back to center. Kick your legs out for a little inner thigh stretch. Um, the wider you open your legs, the more you will feel an inner thigh stretch. A little bit goes a long way, especially in the winter months, especially when we're a little bit tight. You can point your toes, flex your toes, point your toes, flex your toes, maybe draw circles with the ankles, working out the ankles. Good, and then just relax the feet. Take an inhale, sweep your arms up overhead, stretch. Take a moment here, lifting up. Exhale, fold. Hands to floor in front of you. Stick your butt out a little bit. Rather than rounding your spine, arch your spine. Roll your shoulders back and down. Lift your chin and chest. Breathe. You can stay right here or use your breath to get a little bit deeper. Inhale, think about lengthening your spine forward. Exhale, fold. Good. Slowly walk your hands back in. Take your hands outside of your thighs, bring your legs together. Now we're stretching the backs of the hamstrings, backs of the legs. Um, you can point your toes again, flex your toes, maybe draw circles clockwise, counterclockwise, windshield wiper, just working out the ankles, and then relax your feet. Inhale, sweep your arms up overhead. Take a moment here to really lift up. 
Exhale, fold forward, hands to floor outside of your thighs. And again, rather than rounding your spine, think about having a nice flat back. Roll the shoulders back and down. Look forward, keep your neck long, shoulders soft. Option to stay here or use your breath to get a little deeper. Inhale, stretch the crown of your head forward. Exhale, fold. Good, slowly walk your hands back in. Great, okay, that's just a little warm up to get some motion in our body. We're now going to hop into our first um, restorative yoga uh, class or restorative yoga posture, I should say. And if you um, are joining a little bit late for this class, you'll want some different um, pillows. Household pillows doesn't need to be fancy yoga props, but some pillows of different sizes for class. So we're going to start with a very supported wide-legged child's pose. You're going to start by opening your knees. So uh, your knees are about mat width distance, but your feet can touch. And I'll show you in a regular child's pose without props, you just come down forehead to floor, arms in front of you. Um, but this stretch can get kind of intense and also uh, it's not accessible for all of us. So in restorative yoga, I'm going to invite you to use as many pillows and blankets as you'd like. For example, you can place pillows or blankets in between your calves and your thighs, so there's a little bit more support there. If you have tight toes or ankles or knees, you can roll up your yoga mat so that there's extra padding under those delicate joints. You could also place a thin blanket under there. And then as you fold forward, you can place some pillows or blankets underneath your chest for a little extra support. You're welcome to have your arms forward in child's pose, or if you'd like, you can take what's called fetal pose and have your arms down by your side, palms facing up. Um, another option that I sometimes like in restorative yoga is to actually fold forward, but bend my arms and then kind of look to one side. I'll tell you when we're halfway through the posture, and if you'd like, you can lift your head and look to the other side. And we're gonna hold here for a full five minutes. Um, which if you ever see me looking at my phone, it is because I am timing posture. So this posture, especially when held for five minutes, might seem really similar to yin yoga, um, but the, the goal is a little bit different. So in yin yoga, we talk a lot about working into connective tissue, right? We hold postures for long periods of time to get like a deep stretch to um, tendons, ligaments, muscles, fascia, joints. In restorative yoga, right, um, we're still holding postures for long periods of time, but the goal isn't necessarily a physical stretch. The goal is more like mental, emotional, spiritual relaxation. So in yin yoga, often there's a point halfway through where like we get really uncomfortable and we kind of like breathe through that. But in restorative yoga, right, especially hopefully if you're using extra pillows and props here, a little bit more comfy. Um, so hopefully you can hold without feeling, you know, you're still going to get a stretch, right? But you're not um, like forcing yourself into the posture. And if you ever need to take a break or add or remove a prop or take a different shape, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, again, the physical benefits of this posture, we're stretching out the toes, the ankles, the knees, the inner thighs, the hips, we're lengthening through the spine. But the you know, more restorative benefits of this posture are that we're letting the pillows and props really hold us up. We're giving ourselves time just to be with our breath. And if your mind ever starts to wander, you can always just return to your breath in and out through your nose. Or maybe even take an intentionally slow breath. Feel the backs of your ribs open, stretching the back. As you exhale, feel the ribs gently close as your spine resets, right? So you can always return to your breath. We have about two and a half minutes left here and I will give us some time just to be in stillness. If you are looking to one side, you can look to the other side, stretching the other side, neck, shoulder.
take a nice luxurious inhale through your nose, feel your body opening and stretching with the breath. If you'd like, you can open your mouth and slowly let go of the posture, sigh it out. If you're looking to one side or if your forehead is on, on you know, your mat or a pillow, you can look forward. Walk your hands in underneath your shoulders and very slowly press yourself up. You're in that shape for a while, so take your time coming out of it and kind of remove your pillows, placing them to the side. And we're going to turn and lie on our backs in our first savasana of the day. So you can lie on your back. You are welcome to open your arms and legs as much or as little as you'd like. If lying on your back with your legs straight does not feel good to your lower spine, you are welcome to bend your knees, place your feet on the floor about hip width distance, let the knees rest together. You can also place um, a small blanket or pillow underneath your lower back, and that will add some support as well. We're just gonna take a moment here and really allow the floor to hold you up as you breathe through your nose. Picture your spine lengthening and realigning to the nice hard floor. You wouldn't necessarily like sleep on a, on a hard floor, right? But it's actually really great for stretching out your back in yoga. Okay, you're gonna bend your legs if they're not already, and then roll off to one side, take your time. You can even give yourself a little bit of a hug here. Good, and then place your hands on the floor and gently press yourself up. Great, next we're going to do um, a side body stretch, a shoulder opener. It's also a nice way to realign the hips. So for this posture, um, you will want a couple of pillows. I'll show you how I set it up and then you can, um, do your own version of it because we have different size pillows and different body needs. So you're going to sit facing forward with your pillows um, to the right of you. So line up a pillow next to your right hip. You're going to bend your legs with the right knee underneath the left knee and you're going to come down so that um, your torso is kind of going to round or bend over this pillow. Now I like to have two pillows so that I can place my right arm on the floor facing forward and then make sure that you have support for your head here so whether it's one pillow or two pillows or three pillows make sure that your head is not like dangling off right you want you want your neck spine supported from here you can place a pillow in between your knees so that your hips realign and then if you'd like you can kind of have your left hand on the floor close to your right hand or if you'd like a shoulder stretch you can bring your left arm overhead. Okay. We're gonna hold here for three minutes. Um, restorative yoga is sometimes called sleeping yoga because like, you know, if you like me or a side sleeper, this feels kind of familiar, right? Um, and you are always welcome to take a nap in yoga class. That is perfectly fine. Even in like hot yoga, 26 and two yoga, I would sometimes <laughs> take a nap in class. And I remember telling a fellow teacher that one time and he was like, it would be my honor for you to fall asleep in my yoga class. I think about that often. It would be an honor if you fell asleep here. For some of us, um, a yoga class like restorative yoga is the only time in our day where we encounter intentional stillness, rest, and even silence. 
And if that is not something that you encounter often, it can be a little bit jarring. So uh, sometimes, you know, in the stillness of yoga, we find deep peace and it really speaks to us. And sometimes it can be a little bit scary just to be still and breathe. Um, so just know that at any point, especially when I'm not talking, if your mind starts to wander or you get a little bit anxious, that's okay. Remember that yoga is a practice, um, especially if you're used to running around all day. Right here, you're just practicing a little bit of stillness, silence, and breath. And if it doesn't come naturally, that's okay too, right? If your mind is wandering, just return to the breath. If you need to take a moment to fidget or readjust, that's okay. Be gentle with yourself. And again, just think about practicing a little bit of um, breath and restoration. If this posture is speaking to you, or maybe you're starting to doze off, you're welcome to stay here. Otherwise, we'll take it into a spine twist. If your left arm is overhead for a shoulder stretch, you're slowly going to bring your um, circle your left arm around so that your left hand is close to your shoulder. If your right arm is underneath you out to the right in the sort of thread the needle position, you're going to gently lift your head and upper torso, unthread that needle and take your right hand outside of the right side of your body, right side of mat. And from here, you're gonna to start to tilt your um, abdomen and chest down towards your, uh, towards your pillows, down towards the floor. Um, now, some folks like to take this into a full spine twist where they look to the right, the, the opposite way of their knees with left ear on the mat. Um, that is not really accessible for my body. I like to continue to look to the left, but if that feels good for your neck, you're welcome to look to the right with left ear on the mat. You can also have your forehead on your uh, pillow, or again, I'm just going to look to the left in the same direction as the knees. This is a very um, subtle spine twist, abdominal wall twist, right? You want to keep the hips stacked, left hip on top of right hip, left knee on top of right knee, holding here for three minutes.
Take a nice slow inhale through your nose. Feel the oxygen entering all the way into the bottom of your lungs. If it feels good, you can open your mouth and slowly let the posture go. If you're looking to one side, look forward. Whether you're in a side stretch or a spine twist, walk your hands in underneath your shoulders. Slowly, carefully press yourself up, take your time. And remove the pillows and then turn, lie on your back for another Savasana. So we were, you know, on one hip for a while, our legs were stacked. We did a side body stretch. Maybe you held there extra long, or maybe you took it into a spine and abdominal wall twist. And now once again, we're just really letting everything stretch and realign to the floor. Let the floor hold you up. The floor is your friend. Bend your legs if they're not already. Roll off to one side, maybe the side you haven't rolled off to. Take your time pressing yourself up. There's no rush. Once you're ready, we're going to do the other side of that side body stretch, working out the other side of the spine. Ooh, my hair looks kind of funny right now. Here's my two. <laughs> The things we don't think about with yoga. I love yoga hair. Okay, so this time have your pillows um, sit forward with your pillows to the left of your body. Um, once again, you're going to bend your legs coming over to one side and then slowly lie down over one or two pillows. You can have your left arm underneath you, palm facing forward. Again, I encourage you to place a pillow in between your knees if you have one to really um, align the hips so that they're not rotating in. Option to keep your right hand down by your side or bring your right arm overhead, stretching the right side body. Um, and keep in mind that this side might necessitate different props. It might necessitate a different shape. Um, you know, we're not actively working against symmetry. If you're able to do the same thing on both sides, right? It's, it's nice because that makes you not lopsided. But on the other hand, right, maybe you have a really tight shoulder and this just does not feel good on this side. That's okay. Take your hand down by your side instead. We're going to hold here for three minutes. I have a friend who's um, always been like a runner and a cyclist and stuff like that, but he said, you know, the yoga practice, it was the first time that he really started to notice his body and like the proportions of his body and where he's tight, right? I, you know, when we do other athletic pursuits, we might know, oh, I have a recurring knee injury, but um, it's not until like we really start to observe both our body and our mind and our breath and a yoga practice that um, it goes beyond, you know, oh, I have a tight shoulder, right? Some of us might have realized hmm, one of my legs is slightly longer than the other. I have a really long torso or, um, you know, I carry a lot of tension in my chest. And sometimes as yogis, we almost take this knowledge for granted but it's actually quite impressive to know yourself both on um, a physical level, but also again on like a, you know, a mental, emotional and spiritual level as well. So yoga really gives us an opportunity to get to know ourselves better, starting with, you know, okay, what are my body proportions? Where am I tight? And then going into, um, 
gosh, stillness makes me a little bit uncomfortable or like, mm, I love this posture on a sunny day, but not so much when it's raining out or, you know, stuff like that. So just keep in mind, especially if you practice regularly, give yourself some credit, you know, a lot more about yourself than you realize. And, um, be a lot more than other people know about themselves too, right? It's this, this beautiful gift of self-realization through a yoga practice. So good for you for showing up today and, um, and honing that skill of self-acknowledgement, self-awareness, and ultimately self-acceptance and self-love. Option to stay here if this is speaking to you or you just need a little bit more rest um, or you can take this into a twist so if your right arm is overhead you're going to circle that arm down with your right hand outside of right shoulder if your left arm is underneath you you're going to unthread that needle taking left hand outside of um, left pillow and then you're going to slowly tilt your chest and abdomen down towards your mat and again if you'd like, you can look to the left with right ear on uh, the pillow. If that is not accessible for you, as it is not for me, you're welcome to have your forehead down or look to the right with left ear on the pillow. And again, this side might necessitate a little bit of a different shape. I'm noticing that for myself, that's okay. Holding here and breathing. Make sure you're being gentle with yourself. Take a nice soothing breath in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. If you're looking to one side, you can look forward. Slowly walk your hands in underneath you, press yourself up. There's no rush. Remove the pillows. 
or keep a pillow for under your back or your head. And then turning back around, lying down, back into your savasana. In our child's pose, we lengthened the spine. In those postures, we stretched the side body and then twisted the spine. And next, we're going to do a nice back bend and a heart opener. Um, there are many different types of back bends in yoga. Some of them are standing or kneeling. Some of them are, you know, like on our hands, right? <laughs> um, handstand back bends. Um, but in this one, we're going to be lying down and we're going to be using pillows. And for those of you that have ever done another type of back bend, whether it's standing or kneeling, right? Sometimes it can feel like, oh, am I going to tip backwards? And what I love about what we're about to do is um, you're not going to go anywhere. So you can really give into the heart opener and just enjoy the experience of healing compression to the spine, healing extension to the front of the body. You can bend your knees if they're not already, roll off to one side, you can maybe ball yourself up, give yourself a hug here. And then press yourself up. Great. So again, we're going to take some pillows of different sizes. And what I like to do sitting with your back to the pillows. You're going to place one or two big pillows directly behind you for underneath the middle spine, and then one or two smaller pillows um, behind that for your head. So your head can be a little bit lower than your heart, right? But you don't want your head to be jamming all the way back. And this can take a little bit of like trial and error and figuring out your pillow ratio. Um, you are also welcome to grab a blanket and place it over your body for this posture if that feels good. And as you're ready, you're just gonna lie back. The idea here, right, I'll take my blanket off for a second. The idea again is that your head is supported so that your, your neck is not dangling off but um, your heart space and your chest really starts to open. From here, you are welcome to keep your legs straight or you can bend your knees and have your feet on the floor. That can feel good for some folks. You can have your arms down by your side, out to the side or cactus like goal posts. And we are going to hold here for a full 10 minutes. Again, there's so many different types of back bends in yoga, um, and they're really important, especially in a world where we hunch forward, right? Always kind of like hunching down, looking at our phones, especially in the winter months when we're cold and we just kind of round forward to stay warm. Uh, back bends are so important for the back. We also tend to carry tension in the front of our body, and that can get stored up over time. So not only when we dip back, are we healing our spine through compression, but we're also releasing tension from the front of our body, right? From our chest, from our abdomen, from our shoulders. And particularly in this, you know, very pillowed, supportive back bend, you know that you're not going anywhere. So really just enjoy the experience of your heart space opening, of your spine healing through compression, just knowing that you're not going anywhere, that you're safe, that you're tethered.
you're relaxed, see if you can relax even more. Give yourself permission just to sink a little bit deeper into the posture. If you're finding it difficult to um, be still, I'm noticing that for myself today too. And that's a good place to be as well, just observing that with compassion. And again, we're just practicing stillness, not perfection. We're not perfecting stillness. We're just practicing it. Turn towards yourself with compassion, with gentleness, a little bit of softness as you breathe through your nose. We're over halfway through the posture. If you have trouble asking for help, or if you have trouble accepting support from others, practice that here with your pillows and blankets and yoga mat and floor. So you can just practice accepting the support of the floor beneath you, the pillows that are uplifting you, the blankets that are encompassing you, just allow yourself to feel supported, held, anchored. Give yourself permission to relax deeper.
Take an inhale through your nose, feel your chest rise. If it feels good, open your mouth, let it go. There's no one way to come out of this posture. You could, of course, push yourself up or roll yourself up or out. Um, I will share my favorite way to come out of it is to bend your knees if they're not already with your feet on the floor. You're gonna squeeze your butt, lift your hips up, and then remove the pillow from underneath your middle back. Um, you can keep the pillow or pillows underneath your head, or you can remove them as well. And we're gonna come back into our savasana. I'm keeping the blankets over me. So you might notice um, some shifts as you return to the floor. Um, I'm noticing temperature shifts as blood circulates to different part of the body. Um, I'm feeling a little bit lightheaded and heavy headed at the same time. And towards the end of that back bend, it, it felt borderline psych psychedelic for me. So um, I am naming those things what you might be experiencing could be very different, um, or you might not feel much at all and that's normal too, but um, all to say, whatever you're feeling is normal. There's nothing wrong with you. If nobody's told you this yet today, there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, and again, back bends can kind of open some stuff up for us. There's a, there's a teacher in the hot yoga community who once kind of famously held um, a pretty intense back bend called camel pose that some of you guys have tried before. And she held camel pose for like an hour. And uh, a friend of mine who's like a student of yoga, but really a student of fitness and like a personal trainer, I remember him being like, there is no medical benefit to holding that posture for an hour. That's ridiculous. And I wanted to, or like, you know, there's no physical benefit to it. And I was like, well, maybe there's not a physical benefit to it, right? But there might be, again, like a spiritual, emotional, psychological benefit to really opening your heart space for that long. I'm not saying any of us have to do that. But again, these postures go beyond the physical into something a little bit more intangible. So if it feels intangible, that's okay. Bend your knees if they're not already. Roll off to one side and gently press yourself up. After that back bend, we are going to do a counter stretch. Um, you can keep the pillow or the blankets over your legs if you'd like. You're gonna have your legs long in front of you. And then you're gonna place as many blankets or pillows as you see fit in between your thighs and your chest. And you can either fold forward with a rounded spine and just drop your head down or you can really wedge the um, pillows in between your thighs and chest, stick your butt out a little bit and fold forward with a flat back, keeping your neck long. Um, having the back flat is a good option if you have a history of slip discs or if it just feels like too much pressure on the lower back to let your head hang heavy, um, but you can always try it, right? We're just gonna hold here for three minutes. This is our last posture. And it's, it's mostly a counter stretch to that back bend. Um, we're also stretching out the hamstrings, which, you know, especially in the winter feels good, right? Just to stretch the back with the legs. Notice where you're holding on to tension and see if you can just relax a little bit deeper, letting the pillows, the floor hold you up.
Take an inhale through your nose, feel your back stretch. Exhale through your mouth. Anything you want to let go of, let it go. If your head is dropped, gently look forward. Slowly lift yourself up into a neutral spine position. For final savasana, make this your own. You have all these pillows out, you might as well use them. If you want to make a pillow fort, you can make a pillow fort. If you want to put a pillow under your knees, under your lower back, under your head, go for it. Blankets over your body, make it your own, make it luxurious. We're just going to lie down and final savasana. We have a three minute final savasana built in here. So this is very much intentionally built into your yoga practice. Sometimes when I hold postures for long periods of time, at first it feels like time is going really slow. I'm not like, how am I going to do this? And then, you know, partway through something shifts and then I blink and then it's over. Um, and I think this is true, at least for me, outside of a yoga practice as well, that I'm so fixated on when's it going to be over, when's it going to be over, that I forget just to enjoy the ride and enjoy the experience. Um, and yoga reminds me, right, that it's all good. And often by the end of a posture, I'm like, oh, I just want to hold here even longer. So and then as you go about the rest of your evening, I invite you to be present in whatever it is that you're doing. If you're washing dishes, be present in washing the dishes. If you're drinking a cup of tea, be present in drinking a cup of tea. If you're having a conversation with yourself or with someone else, be present in that conversation. And just for another moment here, another minute in our final savasana, be present in final savasana. Breathing in and breathing out. This presence is a gift that you have given yourself and nobody else can take credit for it and nobody else can take that away from you. When you, you're welcome to stay and take a nap or stay in Savasana as long as you'd like. Um, when you do choose to get up, I encourage you to get up mindfully um, and sit up for a while before you stand up because we have been on the floor for a while. Make sure that you're drinking lots of water throughout the rest of your evening to hydrate after you stretched your body so much. Uh, it was beautiful to practice with all of you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Bye, friends. Thank <laughs> you.